So Game Search came out with these, and they sent me a set to try out and give my opinion on. And I didn't know whether or not I should make this review, because there's a huge elephant in the room. You can either get these four, or you can get all of these tools for almost 50 bucks or less. That's right, all of this. But who knows, maybe the markup is worth it. We're going to find out in this video. And while we're at it, I'm going to introduce you to my little arsenal here, which does exactly the same thing as these, and spoiler alert, much, much more. So who knows, maybe you're going to find out about a tool that will truly make your Warhammer hobby better than ever. Let's start with the most expensive tool of the bunch, the fine detail cutter. Now, a few general things about this type of cutter. Typically, the larger ones would be called sprue cutters and these more delicate ones, nippers. Sprue cutters are generally larger and made to deal with thicker parts, while nippers are for what we usually do, getting parts out of the sprue. So we will focus on that. They can come in stamped sheet, joined with some type of rivet and forged ones, with these overlapping joints. The later usually being higher quality and more pricey, mainly because they keep the jaws from shifting and the edges from misaligning and pinching the material. You can already see that the Games Workshop one is stamped sheet, so this is definitely not what should drive the price up. One thing that irks me is that they went with only one of the jaws having a sharp edge compared to the earlier version. This type of nipper is often used in scale modeling, where it's even more important not to damage the delicate parts and the idea is that the blunt side stabilizes while the sharp side provides a clean cut through the material. And sure, you can sell this as a fancy new design and that's why it's so expensive, but it's actually really counterproductive because it's important not to stress the material too much while you're clipping off parts from the sprue. The usefulness of this design also depends on the type of plastic we're working with. Most of the time, scale modeling plastic is hard and that's why the design kind of works there but the Game Swatcher plastic is really soft. To illustrate what I mean, I use these new cutters on a thicker sprue, and what happens is you end up pinching the material. It's deformed by the flat edge, and you get these white stretch marks and deformations as a result. But of course, to be fair, we need to judge it in a more appropriate situation, so let's cut out a part of the sprue instead. But even here, you can see that this is not really the desired result, and you can potentially damage the part and you will have to add a lot more additional time to fix it. I don't really get it. Why create a product that is not compatible with your plastic? Why not think about what works with the material you're using for your minis and design a tool from there? But hey, who am I to tell a multi-billion dollar company what to do? Let's see how my cutter performs in comparison. Here's a cut through some thick sprue material, which results in way less pinching and stretching because it has two sharp edges. And here it is, close to a part that we want to remove from the sprue. Pretty neat. So this is in no way a high-end tool, but it is enough for what we want to do. This is where I should show you five other versions of nippers, but I don't own any, because once I've found something that works, I'm not buying additional stuff only because it might be marginally better. I have these nippers since 10 years and you can see that the blades are still aligned and it cuts like day one. However, if you want a few tips on what to look for in higher quality tools, you should definitely go for welded over stamped sheet. The most important thing is look for the sharpest edges you can find. Usually the smaller the angles of the edge on the jaws, the sharper the tool is and the less deformations you get. On screen, you can see some of the recommendations I researched. I will leave a link to all of the tools that I am using and that I'm mentioning in the description, just in case you find them interesting and maybe want to get them. Let's get to the next tool, which is the mobile remover. I never owned the first iteration. I just never saw the need. So I cannot compare how much this narrower nose improves its function. But I never got the point of a blunt mold iron remover anyway. It might work for super obvious lines, but for more complex shapes like these, no chance. You can't even reach them. I guess if you are in a hurry and you really don't care about the not so obvious lines still showing, sure, this is fine. But even then, I'd assume you would own some sort of hobby knife. I just look at this magic trick and how I turn these separate tools into a two-in-one tool. I have always just removed mold lines with a scalpel. It has a narrow tip, you can reach everywhere, even complex shapes are no problem. And if you really 
really wanted a blunt surface to work with, you just turn it around. What is this? I can't quite make it out. Oh, it's a base. You can remove flash from bases. Well, that changes everything. If you want to get more sophisticated than a hobby knife with your mold line removal, you can always use sandpaper or sanding sticks instead. You can buy these, but I literally just glued some sandpaper to a stick here. Can you imagine having to sell this to someone as the best thing to remove mold lines? Well, you know, this curve here, it's perfect for treating round surfaces and the straight line here, also the notch. But you could just use a hobby knife. Shh, now Timmy, go away. That will be $25. Next up, we have the new knife. It holds these standard scalpel plates, which are kept in place by this vice mechanism, controlled by the rotating handle back here. It also has a notch over the blade, which technically appears like a good idea on first sight because you can place your finger on it like this more comfortably and apply more force when needed. Even though I don't know if I recommend to apply more force with a blade, it also has the plastic casing. I guess it was easier to mold the ergonomic shape, which I think is kind of overkill. You don't really need it. But at the same time, it still feels cheap because of it and even a tiny bit flimsy. I just prefer metal handles. One thing that bothers me is that putting in the blades is a bit more dangerous than with other types, simply because the notch up here is getting in the way of pushing down the blade while you can just slide it in with one of these other types. I just don't think any of these new features justify the price point. A basic knife like this with extra blades is $5.99. It does not need to be any more expensive. The quality does not improve if you're buying a $10.99 version and it does not get more suited for what we are doing when you're buying a $19.99 version. But what you can get for $19.99 is a set like this which offers you a lot more blade shapes and even chisel type blades. And honestly, this was one of the best purchases I ever made because it has helped me with kit bashing, re-sculpts, terrain building, and so on for the last 15 years. I even built and converted most of my Golden Demon entries with this. The drill comes with a couple of extra drill bits with different diameters. It also has this fancy vice mechanism again, so it's pretty easy to switch between the bits. While I was testing it, again, it felt a bit flimsy, but what was really annoying was the two flaps on the side here, which kind of get in the way while twisting the drill. There just isn't any real comfortable way to use it. And I don't even know what their purpose is to begin with. Maybe someone of you has an idea? What I personally have been using over the years is this hand drill that I got from a local do-it-yourself store for about seven bucks back in the day. It came with a lot of extra drill bits and they're fine for the plastic GW users. Eventually I got some higher quality bits as the old ones started breaking, but that was back when metal minis were still a thing. I can even store some extra bits back here in the handle because as I mainly use this hand drill for pinning and fitting my minis to a base. And that's actually one thing that the Games Workshop tool has over something like this. The front holds all kinds of diameters more easily. You don't have to change anything. But whenever I need a larger diameters or more heavy duty drilling, I use this instead. It's a mini Dremel that's cordless and that's super comfortable to use because it's so small. It speeds up things like drilling out bolt holes massively. Especially if you're doing armies, I can only recommend this. And it comes with all kinds of extra bits like cutting discs, different milling bits if you want to convert your minis, and you can even polish a turret with it. If you only are going to use it to drill, there's special tools for that. And those are even cheaper, but this one is super versatile and it's less than the Games Workshop hand drill, while at the same time giving you so many more possibilities for your hobby. Now, the extra money that you saved at this point, you can invest into other helpful things like magnifying glasses, sandpaper, or proper pliers, or anything that goes beyond the basics of miniature building. Maybe you could get a foam cutter or some precision saws like these, or these, which are my favorite conversion tools whenever I need a clean cut quickly. I don't think it comes as a surprise when I say I have a problem with these tools being as expensive as they are. The problem is that neither are the innovations that great to justify the price, nor that they use any expensive material or workmanship to manufacture these. But an even bigger problem I have with the GW tools is you kind of need most of these to start the hobby. I mean, except for this.
So it's really easy to talk beginners into buying these. After all, you need a way to get your parts out of the sprue, right? Might as well just scrap this while you're shopping anyway. Like no one that has any kind of experience or put a little research into hobby tools will buy this over something they already have. So in a way, this is a bit of a newbie trap and that just feels super wrong. Is this really the occasion where you have to make money off of your customers and especially new customers? Once people are hooked on the hobby, they will spend anyway. I know it, you know it, we're all hooked on plastic crack. And the point is you don't have to come up with your own designs. Like I'm pretty sure you could find some solid tools to rebrand. If Army Painter can do it, I'm pretty sure Games Workshop can do it. You could offer a set of nippers, knife and a drill for 35 bucks and people would be like, this hobby is pretty cheap. Either GW are in this bubble where they have been marketing the we are the hobby approach so hard that they really think a lot of the stuff that they're selling isn't available anywhere for way less money and a lot more practical too. Or they're plainly just trying to make as much money off of these tools as they can. And I don't know which I find more irritating. I really should not upload this video. Games Workshop is going to fire me.